Welcome to my overview of A Healer Only Lives Twice by Japanese indie developer Pong Pong Games. I picked up the game at their table at Kamike 90 and had an interesting conversation about the indie scene in Tokyo. The premise of this game, though, is simple if not unimaginative. Escape the dungeon that you're in. But what really differentiates the game, and what honestly drew my attention to it, was that instead of controlling the buff warrior, players find themselves in the support role of healer who has two main objectives. One, make sure that your warrior companion remains a living meat shield, and two, make sure that you don't run out of torches. What's also interesting about the game, at least from its Tokyo origins, is that it comes with multilingual support. Although this is still a rarity in the current doujin game environment, I think we'll start to see more developers releasing games in both English and Japanese as platforms like Steam gain traction in the Japanese market. Basically, A Healer Only Lives Twice resembles a strategy puzzle game with RPG elements. Battles take place across 25 levels called tiers, with each tier comprised of two or three types of monsters and the occasional random item. The most important of these are torches, which let the warrior see the things trying to eviscerate you, and red orbs, which wipe out any remaining monsters in that tier so you can progress. Each tier has one torch and one red orb, but other items can also be found. These include potions to replenish health or mana, buffs to permanently increase attack or defense, or various materials that can be used to craft these consumables. As torches play such a central role in the game, any item or material can be sacrificed to extend their duration, although in practice this isn't really worth it, as even the uber items extend torch duration by what appears to be nanoseconds. Part of the strategy of the game, then, lies in deciding whether to fully clear a tier of all of its monsters thus gaining the necessary experience to improve your skills, or to use the red orbs liberally to conserve torches and progress towards the dungeon exit. Now realistically, you probably won't make it out to the blue skies and sunshine in your first or even your fifth go unless you are extremely lucky. That's because the arrangement of items and monsters in the tiers are randomized. But after each failure, you're awarded points that you can then spend to increase the power of your various skills, improve crafting, or even change your start location in the dungeon. Score is determined by how many monsters you defeat in combination with how many days you survived. While each tier is six or more monsters deep, they clearly respect waiting in line, as only those in the first row can attack. These attacks damage specific parts of the warrior's body, like the VAT system in Fallout, and if a part is damaged enough, it becomes useless. This translates into penalties ranging from decreased attack or defense to reduced rate of attack. Luckily, as a healer, you've got plenty of skills to prevent both of you from becoming skeletal landmarks. Your repertoire includes the obvious skills related to healing, as well as buffs to attack and defense, and one skill that lets you create a random type of mana potion. Of course, fighting your way through hordes of monsters is going to take time. The upper left corner of the game screen keeps track of how long you've been in the dungeon, along with whether it's night or day. During the daytime, you regen health, and at night you regen mana. While the health regen rate is fixed, mana regen is tied to the phase of the moon, although it can be manipulated through the use of rare items. Managing mana, especially in the later stages, is one of the core mechanics of the game. Gameplay is a bit slow but thankfully it can be fast-forwarded by holding down the cancel button. Without this feature, the game would honestly suffer, as the length of time between monster actions and your warrior's attacks are painfully long. In fact, I generally play the game in its fast-forwarded state, returning to normal game speed only to issue commands or consume items. Overall, the game isn't that long. Once you're properly prepared, it can be cleared in about 20 minutes, although that can only realistically be accomplished after a few hours of leveling up abilities. Unfortunately, though, there's not much to do after completing the game except try it again. While the game is highly replayable, it would be nice to see enemies get progressively stronger after each clear. All in all, the healer only lives twice is a decent way to kill a few hours, and the dual language option is a feature that I hope we will see more from Japanese indie devs in the future. The randomness of the game provides some replayability, but after repeated leveling, the challenge gradually declines.